Today's video will be all about how to use CyberGhost, from navigating their UI to changing settings and making sure you get the best out of this VPN. So, the first step in this CyberGhost VPN tutorial is installing the application and setting up your account. If you haven't purchased a subscription yet, I have a wonderful deal that can be found by scanning the QR code or checking the description. Not only is it one of the most affordable providers, but it also has a 45-day money-back guarantee. Setting up CyberGhost is as simple as any other application. Once you've downloaded and installed, it should open automatically. Go ahead and log in right here. Once inside, you'll be met with a dashboard. At first glance, it all seems neat enough. You've got this big button letting you know you're connected and relevant tabs listed down the left side where more CyberGhost VPN features can be found. If you tap this arrow button here, you'll be able to expand your view and either look at all of their servers or use the search box to find a specific one. CyberGhost VPN has a wide collection with 100 different countries to choose from. But how to use CyberGhost VPN servers? Well, it depends on your needs, meaning they're ideal for certain scenarios. Take the gaming servers as an example. These show the lowest latency and are intended to improve your lag. CyberGhost is one of the few VPNs that actually has specified gaming servers, so that's impressive in and of itself. The theme continues in the CyberGhost guide as you continue reading down the list of specialized servers, with each name indicating the server's main use. Torrenting with the specialized P2P servers increases your speeds and enhances the security of your connection. These work with P2P clients like uTorrent. I recommend checking the distance tab on the right of each server here, since your proximity to the server can dictate your speeds. Streaming servers help you get around geoblocks and access various content in 4K from anywhere. CyberGhost enhances the experience even further by suggesting which server to use based on the platform you're trying to access. All you have to do is check the text next to the server and connect. Great for any beginner. While this does mean you'd have to change servers every time you switch platforms, it didn't bother me because I found it easier than having to test servers myself. Finally, the dedicated IP servers are useful, but keep in mind they come at an extra cost and don't boost your anonymity as you'll be assigned and use the same IP address. This is a unique IP address all for you, and people tend to use this for uploads or reliable streaming since there's less of a chance of server overcrowding. Now that the main servers are explained, I want to make this a full CyberGhost tutorial by showing you the privacy settings. In this section, you'll be able to customize things like blocked content, DNS leaks, and the kill switch. I advise you to keep all these settings enabled because they enhance your privacy by preventing your data from being leaked. It's worth pointing out these CyberGhost on Mac OS features are a little lackluster in comparison to their Windows counterparts. Okay, the last tab at the bottom is Smart Rules. Once clicked, you'll see a lot of customizations under relevant tabs. These just help you automate CyberGhost at your convenience. The first tab will let you customize whether a VPN connection is automatically started once the app is launched. Here, I've chosen the best server location, but you can choose the specific country or server too. Keep in mind, if you want to connect to the same server each time, you need to select it as a favorite first, and then choose that in the drop-down menu. Moving on to the next section, Wi-Fi protection for CyberGhost on Windows, or simply Wi-Fi rules on Mac. I recommend customizing your connection when unsafe Wi-Fi is detected, like public Wi-Fi. Moving on, we have exceptions and app rules. The former lets you exclude websites from passing through the VPN tunnel. The latter makes the VPN automatically connect to a server when you launch a particular app, say a streaming provider or a sensitive work app. Last but not least, we all know what the cogwheel means. It's the settings. Here, you'll find the expected account information and general stuff with a few important things too. Under the CyberGhost VPN section, you'll be able to choose your protocol. This is just a type of technology that helps the VPN send your data across the internet securely. Note, it's connected to automatic selection by default, but it's worth knowing that the protocols differ in terms of speed and security. WireGuard is by far the most advanced and fastest protocol CyberGhost offers, so if you change your protocol, I'd recommend just sticking with this. And if you need more information on VPNs and their settings, be sure to subscribe to the channel for weekly content. So, I've spent a lot of time discussing how to use CyberGhost on Windows, but what about other operating systems? Starting with how to use CyberGhost on Mac. As you see, the main dashboard principles are similar. It's the same case for specialized servers and accessing customizations. The cogwheel is located at the top with all the same settings we've covered. 
While testing, I noticed a few differences in terms of functionality compared to the Windows version. Glaringly, the kill switch has a few connection issues sometimes, establishing a VPN connection, but no internet connection. Split tunneling is missing altogether, and there isn't any open VPN protocol, though WireGuard is a better alternative. With that said, there are a few improvements too like the option to turn on data compression to reduce download size. All in all, the Mac version is just as easy to use as the Windows, with the most important features readily available. What about CyberGhost on iOS or CyberGhost on Android? Here are their interfaces with dashboards reminiscent of their desktop counterparts. That's how you navigate to the servers. And over here, you see the privacy settings and finally the smart rules. To be honest, they're pretty much a mirror image of one another, with simple features and easy to use layouts. A big difference is between the protocols. iOS lacks OpenVPN, but makes up for that with Ike v2 and WireGuard, while Android arguably has the most efficient coupling, OpenVPN and WireGuard. With all that out of the way, I do wanna give you a caveat about the browser extension. With only four locations to choose from and traffic getting encrypted by SSL only, it has room for improvement. Basically, I'd stick to the mobile or desktop apps if you want the best experience, at least for now anyway. If you do decide to give CyberGhost a try today, don't forget the links in the description will take you to the best pricing. With well thought out designs, an array of specialized servers, and a huge list of locations, CyberGhost is a great 2024 VPN. It's fair to say, not all ghosts are something to be afraid of. Okay, that's my CyberGhost VPN Tutorial 2024 edition. I'll see you soon.